and in remembering the gallant young men of this village who laid down their lives in the good fight against the German Prince of Darkness, let us not forget our Lord's great sacrifice and let us now ask his merciful protection for those of this village serving with our armed forces in foreign fields and on the seas, that they may not falter nor fail, but that may return to their homes in safety when the battle is won. Lance Corporal Arthur Hampton, Private Robert Tasker, Sergeant Alan Farmer, Private Alfred Gaynor, Private Edward Thomas, Corporal Samuel Blackett. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Amen. Right, all pilots and observers of sea flight, please remain where you are. Oh, God. No, no, no. Up there, God. Over there, triggers. That's for Mercedes. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Farmer. Take care. Your son's in the Flying Corps. Alan, isn't it? My nephew. Oh, uh, of course. Do forgive me. Why, oh, Tom. How do you do, Tom? Miss uh, Collins. Right. As you all know by now, the enemy have a new machine. It's a monoplane. It's a machine gun that fires through the propeller arm. What this means is that our aeroplanes are now obsolete. It's my opinion. However, if it's any consolation to you, it's the opinion of the Royal Flying Corps HQ and also of the Royal Aircraft Factory that this thing, this thing is still a splendidly stable aeroplane, ideally suited to the sort of war we ought to be fighting. Whenever they get round to deciding what sort of a war that is. Any questions so far? Yes. Are you sure about this machine gun being able to fire forward? I mean, you actually saw it. Yes, I've not only seen it, I've been shot at with it. Mr. Conrad, Sergeant Farmer, can bear witness to that. It's true. Yeah, well, I... I just don't see how it could work. Well, somehow they've synchronized the gun to the revolutions of the propeller. Now, various points. One, this aeroplane, this Hun machine, it looks like a French Moran. So if you see what you think is a Moran, don't assume it's a friendly Frenchman. It's probably a Hun. Two, forget everything you've learned about being safe if the enemy's flying directly towards you. Nonsense. I nearly shot be, my Mr. Conrad, if you let him do that, you're as good as dead. And three, it's not our job to go looking for trouble. We've got enough problems without the wrecks. Well, there must be something we can do, for heaven's sake. I mean, tactically, that is. Well, yes, there is. If you're flying parallel to it, it can't attack you. But it can turn in half the space we can with this creature. I don't think there are many of them. Not yet. Well, why do you think that? Because if there were, not many of us would be here by now. We know there's at least one of these monoplanes, Tom Plerve. No doubt there'll be others. And if we're lucky, it won't attack if there's more than one of us. It's tactic. It's tactic would appear to be coming at us from behind and below. It's clever. It's difficult to spot. So in future, we fly in pairs. Any questions? Good. Sergeant Farmer. Sir? Go down for reconnaissance this afternoon. Yes, sir. Mr. Galey and Mr. Bravington will escort you. Oh, and on the seventh day, God rested. Almighty, well, wasn't in the Royal Flying Corps. Dismissed. It's damn stupid expecting newly trained airmen to fly over enemy lines the day they arrive. About the two replacements, sir? Yes. They've crash landed at Brenzet. Where the hell's Brenzet? Between Rye and New Romney. That's in Kent. Yes, sir. So you won't be going on the long reconnaissance now, sir? <laughs> yes, I will. But I understood the flight was to always operate in pairs. Whenever possible. Unfortunately, I'm not in a position to tell Brigade that I can't perform a reconnaissance in France because one of our pilots has crashed in Kent. Total set. Contact. Future with the flying pairs, eh? Sticking up the rules, but he doesn't damn well obey them himself. Oh, 
car ever turned in flames? No, it was smoke. And there was oh. another high-ranking officer as well. Three birds with one stone. <laughs> Where's Captain Triggers? He's not back yet. Well, just wait till he hears that Peter's back to General. Not back, but he went off at ten. Yes, he should have been back four hours ago. Yeah, but you would have heard if anything's happened. Nothing, sir. But the aeroplane that was escorting there you... There wasn't one. He went off alone. The replacements didn't arrive. Oh, God. Nothing could happen to Triggers. I mean, he's the best pilot in the Corps. Well, I've notified the squadron commander, sir. He said you were to take over as acting flight commander. You read the morning's paper? When do I get time to read the paper? Now, it's best Molly doesn't see it. Things they say in Parliament. A lot of crackpots, I reckon. What do they say? About what's happening to our airmen, that Colonel Faber. Faber, who's he? A conservative member for Andover, and he says our pilots are being... Here, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here. Our pilots are being murdered rather than killed. Ah. Well, a nonsense. Mm -hmm. On account of our equipment being no good. That's what he says. Probably doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, they say anything in Parliament. Best lot of generals in the world, ours. That make sure our lads had the best equipment. Stands to reason. <coughs> Stupid saying things like that. Upsetting people. I don't suppose Molly goes reading the papers, what's going on in Parliament. Yeah. All the same. Let's keep that out of sight, Tom. Yeah. I'd like to be in Parliament at all. And we're told that it's vitally important that this ammunition dump be photographed. Now, I know that it's almost at the limit of your range. Don't worry, we'll find it. The other thing is that I shan't be able to send another aeroplane with you. They're all wanted for artillery spotting. So don't do anything silly. I demand that Sergeant Farmer is court-martialed. It was a question of judgment. I am, as you know, new to the Royal Flying Corps. However, I do happen to know just a little bit about what is a question of judgment and what is cowardice. I also happen to know that cowardice in the face of the enemy is a court-martial offence. 
Yes. Uh, may I come in, Mrs. Farmer? I would like to talk to you. Oh, it's you, Vicar. Uh, are you alone? Oh, yes, it's just me in the house now that my son... Oh, please sit down. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Farmer, have you had a letter from Alan recently? Yes, I had one just yesterday. Why? Well, may I ask what it said? Well, it didn't really say anything very much. It was all censored. I was hoping there might be some news of him coming home on leave. There was no, how shall I put it, no unexpected news. Unexpected? Why, well, have you heard from Alan? He's not hurt, is he? I've had a letter from the Reverend Thorpe. He's the chaplain of Alan's regiment, a uh, squadron. Well, what did he say? He's not... He's not been killed. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, then what is it? Mrs. Farmer, I never really knew your son. I only took over this parish when the Reverend Davis became the force's chaplain, so I do not know the background. This is a Christian home. Yes, of course. Perhaps... Perhaps I'd better tell you what the chaplain says. He writes... I have to tell you that one of your parishioners is facing a most serious charge. Sergeant Farmer went on a reconnaissance flight and, when confronted with an enemy aeroplane, turned and... These are the chaplain's words, not mine. Turned and fled. I do not yet know the full details of what occurred, but I am afraid that he is facing a court-martial charged with cowardice. I have spoken to him, and it is clear that he has been under very great strain. But, of course, military law is military law. His parents will be in need of comfort. He doesn't know your widow, you see. I have seen so much suffering since I came to France, and in my heart I cannot reproach any man for breaking under the stress. But I am deeply afraid of what might happen. And he writes of other things. Coward! It's not true! As soon as he was old enough, he volunteered. He's not a coward! There must be some mistake. Alan wouldn't run away. Even as a child, he was a boy who would stop any bullying in school. Mrs. Farmer. I'm afraid this puts me in a very difficult position. Next Sunday, I was going to add a special part to the service. I was going to ask the congregation to pray for all the men from the village who are serving. And I was going to read out their names. I don't see... You don't see what? I don't see how I can read out Alan's name. I don't know what my son has done or hasn't done. But you'll read out his name. You'll read out his name and pray for him along with the others. No good, I'm afraid. They're going to get through with it. Well, I did everything I could. I did try and talk Conrad out of it, but he simply insisted. Apparently, he's written to his uncle already. General? Yes. As far as he can see, there simply has to be a court-martial. Don't worry too much. Well, I don't know anything about court-martials. Well, what happens? Well, there's a president and a couple of other officers acting as judges. Yeah, but who, who actually charges me? Well, he's the prosecutor. And there'll be witnesses. Well, in your case, it'll just be Comrade, I expect. And, uh, and there's the prisoner's friend. What's that? Well, he's whoever the prisoner wants to be his, well, sort of lawyer, really. You can choose who you want. Will you do it for me? My dear fellow, I thought you'd never ask. Of course, I'd be delighted. Now, I'll tell you what I found out so far. Um, the uh, prosecutor, he's a chap called Lieutenant Walker. Used to be a solicitor. Doesn't fly or anything. And, uh, well, I'm a bit smug about this, but uh, I've managed to change the president. I didn't realise everything had gone so far. Well, the first president never flown before. So naturally, I went to the squadron commander and I said, damn it, how am I going to explain what it's like in an aeroplane if a chap's never been in one? And he entirely agreed. So now we've got a chap called uh, Major Cashman, who uh, is a flyer, or rather was, turned a gun bus upside down or something and can't walk properly. Anyway, he's not going to think very much of a prosecutor who's never flown before in his life. 
Well, I suppose he won't. Oh, and by the way, I met a chap a couple of days ago who was a prisoner's friend. He says the main thing is to be, well, sort of terribly formal, you know, like the old Bailey. Yes. I read somewhere that they, they have a sword on the table. And if it's pointed at you, that means they found you guilty. That's not for you, that's for the commissioned office. They say some of the infantry have been caught martialed for Cody's. Oh, that was only a rumour. Oh, it's more than a rumour. Well, even if it was, that's entirely different. Well, I heard they were Nobody shot. Nobody really knows. Anyway, as I say, your case, it's... Well, it's quite different. Surely it ought to be more than just dear sir. Members of Parliament are honourables. Only when they're talking to each other. The honourable gentleman doesn't mean anything. We'll never voted for him anyway. Well, he won't know that anyway. It don't make no difference. He put up a poster once for his opponent. So did a lot of people, I expect. And the door of the smithy. What have you got so far? Dear sir, I hope you can help me. My son, Sergeant Alan Farmer, Royal Flying Corps, has been charged with cowardice. I don't know what he's supposed to have done, but I know it isn't true that he is a coward. Can you please ask what he's been accused of doing and what's happening to him? That's all. You'll have to give Alan's number and his squadron. Oh, yes. Your honourable gentleman can find out the rest from the war office. They'll know what's going on. Why, well, that new vicar had to go and tell you. Did you see the letter from Alan's padre? No. Nope. But he read it out, well, most of it, that is. Did it say in it that you should be told? Just that... I'd be in need of comfort. I dare say he may not afterwards. Harry. Yeah? Do you think it helps? Praying, I mean. A lot of parsons have wasted a lot of time if it doesn't. Well, it's only... I went into the church and prayed. And I looked round and I saw these memorials for all these other wars, name after name, just from this very village. And I thought, I suppose people must have prayed for them. Come in. Lieutenant Galleon. Galleon, yes. Lieutenant Walker, I'm prosecuting tomorrow. How do you do? Sad, this sort of thing. Yes. Yes, it is. Sergeant Farmer, he's... Uh... He's what? Well, he's not the sort of chap this sort of thing ought to happen to. Nobody is, are they? That's why we have discipline. Now, what I meant was that... Well, that as a pilot, automatically, he's under a great deal of strain. Not uncommon in time of war, strain. No, what I meant was that... Well, I hope you won't be too hard on him. And I hope you don't think there ought to be one law for the infantry and another for the rather pampered pilots. The court is in session. Bring in the prisoner. Prisoner escort! Prisoner escort, shut! Right, front, quick, march! Head left, right, left, right, mark time! Prisoner escort, halt! Sergeant Farmer, sir. About uh, Alan. I've spoken to the bishop about him. He uh, has put my mind entirely at rest. First of all, he points out that we must pray for all our fighting men, even even those in trouble. Uh, perhaps uh, especially those in trouble. So uh, I will mention Alan's name every Sunday with all the others. Good. I might have been unpleasant, Vicar, if you hadn't mentioned his name. Of course, I, uh, I understand how you must feel, and uh, Mrs. Farmer perhaps even more strongly. Uh, 
secondly, the bishop has told me that if a British soldier is court-martialed for cowardice and suffers the ultimate penalty, then the family are not told what happened. Uh, they are told that he was killed in action. Yes, I know. Oh, yes, of course, you, you were in the cavalry, I understand. So, this means that Alan is entitled to the respect of his neighbours and his comrades and, of course, the love of his family. And uh, the name will be on any memorial with all the others. That'll be a great comfort. Will you... Will you tell Mrs. Farmer that I am praying for Alan? Even if the court-martial can show no mercy, there is always the mercy of God. Mrs. Farmer's praying too. And she wonders if God answers prayers. Oh, yes. He always answers them. It is just that sometimes the answer is no. And when you saw the enemy aeroplane, where was it? About 2,000 feet below us on the port side. And what did you do? Well, naturally, as we were in the perfect position to attack, I ordered Sergeant Farmer to go down. And what did he do? He started climbing and turned back for home. And after Sergeant Farmer had turned back, what did you do then? Well, at first, I could not believe what was happening. Then when I realised that he really was running away, I ordered him to turn and attack the enemy. But my orders were ignored. When we landed, I protested. Thank you. That's all. Damn it! I gave him an order! That's all, Mr. Conrad. I would remind you that you are now a lieutenant in the Royal Flying Corps, no longer a lieutenant colonel in the cavalry. I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Galen. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> lieutenant Comrade, how long had you been in the squadron when you made this particular flight? Five days. And before that, what had been your experience in action as an observer? None, as you know. Would you agree that the German monoplane is a far better fighting machine than the B-2C that you were flying? No, I would not. How were you armed on this particular flight? With a manlicker. A rifle? It's my own personal gun. The finest hunting rifle in the world. A rifle? Yes. Whereas the enemy was armed with a machine gun capable of firing through the propeller arc at something like 500 rounds a minute. Uh, Mr. Conrad, what were your orders? And what was the purpose of this particular flight? To photograph and identify an ammunition dump. And did you carry out those orders? No. Sergeant Farmer turned and fled for home when he saw the enemy. Thank you, Mr. Conrad. That's all. Lieutenant Conrad is the only witness for the prosecution, sir. Thank you. Mr. Galen, would you like to present your defence? Thank you, sir. The Sergeant Farmer, sir, has been accused of a crime which I, as a man who've known him for a Are very long... Are you going to offer any witnesses? Oh, well, yes, sir. Sergeant Farmer. Then you must examine him before you make your speech. Sorry, sir. <clears throat> Sergeant Farmer. How long have you been in France? Since the end of May, sir. And during that time, how many hours have you spent flying? About six or seven hours a day, sir. And of your flight, how many airmen that were here when you first arrived are still in action? Just you and me and Lieutenant Bradlington, sir. You know, the court would remind prisoner's friend that the fact that the Flying Corps has been suffering casualties is no defence to this charge. I was merely trying to indicate, sir, that Sergeant Farmer is one of the most experienced pilots in the Corps. Yes, you may make that point either by examining the witness or in your final speech. Uh, yes. You may not make it in the way you are doing. And that he has a lot more experience at flying, sir, than Lieutenant Conrad, even though he is inferior in rank. My same remarks apply. Continue questioning the prisoner. Sir. Uh, Sergeant Farmer, have you ever turned back before? I mean, uh, when you've been on one of these reconnaissance flights? Yes, sir. Twice through engine failure and once when some Archie ripped through a wing. The aeroplane was... Well, I managed to get back to our own side of the line, sir. But you have never turned back before when you've seen an enemy aircraft? No, sir. Why, then, did you turn back this time? Because it was a German monoplane, sir. Tell me, how far were you from your destination? That is, the ammunition dump that you were to photograph. Well, we're practically flying over it, sir, a matter of four or five miles ahead. But you decided not to go on? Yes, sir. Why? Because it would have been foolhardy to do so, sir. Foolhardy? Uh, perhaps you would explain your reasoning to the court. Yes, sir. Well, to try to photograph from the air takes very steady flying and a lot of concentration. With the monoplane in the vicinity, 
Well, the B-2's a sitting duck at the best of times, but in that situation, he must have shot us down. Well, couldn't you have flown around until the monoplane had gone away? He wasn't going away, was he? How do you mean? Well, he knew where that dump was, and he knew we'd be trying to photograph it. So he was waiting for us, wasn't he? That's his tactic, isn't it? We all know that. I see. What was your fuel situation? Just enough to get there and back. But not enough to engage the enemy for half an hour, especially him having a faster machine than ours anyway. So, briefly then, you would say that you made the right decision in turning of home on this particular occasion? Yes, sir. If we'd tried for those photographs, we would have been shot down. I'm certain of that, sir. Have you ever seen this German monoplane in action before? Once, when I was escorting Captain Triggers. He was our flight commander, sir. Yes, I knew Captain Triggers. He was an old friend of mine. And when Captain Triggers encountered this machine, what did he do? Well, after he made sure that he did, in fact, have the forward-firing machine gun, sir. Yes. Well, he tried to break away and get home. You mean that having seen Captain Triggers... How shall I put it? Having seen that Captain Triggers didn't wish to engage the enemy, you personally didn't feel capable of fighting him either. Well, none of us are capable of fighting this particular machine, sir. Not on our own, not with the weapons and aeroplanes we have. Damn it! I almost shot the pilot of that German Mr. monoplane! Mr. Conrad, with your wealth of experience, you should know something of courts, Marshal. You should not need reminding that you may not interrupt. I'm sorry, sir. But another foot or so and I'd have got him. If you interrupt again, I shall order you from the court. I'm prepared to take the consequences, sir. I almost shot that Hun in the neck. You will leave the court. There will be no more interruptions. Continue, Mr. Galen. Sir. Sergeant Farmer, do you think that had Captain Triggers been the pilot of your machine instead of yourself, that he would have attacked this particular German monoplane? Really, sir, I don't think the prisoner's friend has any right to ask the prisoner what he thinks someone else might have done or might not have done. I agree with you, Mr. Walker. Sorry, sir. Did you turn back because you were frightened? Yes, we're all frightened, aren't we? It's not why I turned back, though. And if the same situation arose again, what would you do? I'd do the same thing, sir. Have you finished examining the witness? Yes, sir. The court would be grateful if you'd tell us in future. Sorry, sir. Mr. Walker. Sergeant Farmer, did Lieutenant Conrad signal you to attack the enemy? Yes, sir. You did understand him. You realized that he was giving you an order. Yes, sir, but it's not quite the same, you see, sir. Sometimes the pilot has to make the decision, sir. You do agree that you are a sergeant, that Lieutenant Conrad is a commissioned officer? Yes, sir, but it is different in the air, sir. Different? How do you mean, different? Well, different from, from on the ground, sir. Up in the air, there's a sort of understanding that the pilot, whatever his rank, is in charge of his machine. Well, perhaps you'd be kind enough to show the court where in the RFC document or manual it states that. The manual hasn't been written yet, and as you're not a pilot yourself, perhaps nobody's told Mr. you. Mr. Galeon, you may not interrupt. You should have elicited this information during your questions. Anything further, you will reserve for your final speech. Yes, sir. Shall we accept that you decided not to attack the enemy despite the fact a commissioned officer ordered you to? Yes, sir. This German monoplane, did it attack you? It tried to, sir. And how many rounds did it fire from the machine gun that Mr. Galeon speaks of? None. None? Well, I managed to avoid his line of fire, sir, by using cloud for cover. Hiding from it, you mean? With respect, sir, may I point Mr. out... Mr. Galeon. You were hiding from it? Well, yes. I see. This enemy machine, of course, could only fire forward. Yes, sir. Had it been able to fire, let us say, to the side, or upwards, or downwards, or to the rear, as Mr. Conrad could in your aeroplane, it could presumably have hit you. If I hadn't flown to a low for that, yes, sir. The point I'm trying to raise, sir, is that the odds would seem a great deal more evenly balanced than prisoner's friend would have us believe. Oh, with the greatest respect, sir, I must point out that there is simply no comparison whatsoever between either the aircraft or the armament. Mr. Galeon, I am allowing you a great deal of laxity, because obviously you are very inexperienced but I will tolerate no more interruptions. You deliberately decided not to attack the enemy? Yes, sir. And when the enemy attacked you, you decided to turn around and run away. Now, is this what you normally do? Do you normally try to avoid fighting the enemy? Well, in the case of the German monoplane, yes, sir. Have you at any time been given specific orders not to risk a battle with this particular enemy? Well, not in so many words, no, sir. Well, I'm sure we're all very glad to hear that. Thank you. 
Well, I think we'll hear the concluding speeches this afternoon. Court will now adjourn for lunch. Don't worry too much. I've got my final speech to come in. Prisoner escort, left turn! Fall in! By front, quick march! And left, right, left, right! Sorry I haven't been coming to see you so often. Oh, that's all right. See you in the mornings with the milk. Like a bite to eat? Oh, no, thank you. I'm off to the hospital. Oh, I thought you only worked nights. I go over Wednesday afternoon as well now. Oh, I don't know how you manage it. What with the farm work and the milk round. You still writing to Alan? No. He had a 48-hour leave in Paris. Met Charles's sister. Charles's sister? His officer friend. Her name's Kate. He told us about her once before he went to France. Oh, yes, I remember. Oh, fancy that. Leave in Paris. He might have come home. If you're wondering why I'm here now, it's to... It's just that however I might feel about him since that letter, I just don't believe he's a coward. Who told you? Harry. Well, I thought there was something wrong, so I asked him. <sighs> Makes me feel so selfish being cross about Charles's sister and not coming to see you so often. But I didn't know about the court martial till this morning. And on the evidence which has been presented to this court, there is absolutely no doubt what that decision should be. The prisoner is charged with disobeying a lawful order. Not only does Lieutenant Conrad say he disobeyed that order, the prisoner himself admits it. Instead, he claims that some folk legend in the British Flying Corps gives him the right to disobey that order. The prosecution says that it is not for a sergeant of however new a corps of the British Army to decide what shape military discipline shall take. It is not for the prisoner to redefine military law. On the second and more serious charge, that of cowardice in the face of the enemy, the facts are clear and not disputed. His orders were perfectly clear. He abandoned his mission and he refused to engage the enemy. The prisoner's friend, if I understand correctly, suggests that the prisoner fled because that is what an experienced pilot ought to do. Frankly, I find this a little hard to follow. The prisoner's friend also suggests that the enemy enjoys such an advantage in equipment that it would be folly for a pilot to... Yes to carry out his orders. Now, this may be the prison's belief that our aeroplanes are inferior. It is not, however, the belief of the Royal Aircraft Factory that makes those aeroplanes, nor is it the belief of Lieutenant Conrad, an officer who dropped in rank from Lieutenant Colonel in order to join the Flying Corps. A man of unquestioned gallantry. A man who has seen more active service than anybody else in this court. And since when? has a supposed inferiority in equipment been regarded as a reason why a British soldier should disobey an order. The difference between Sergeant Farmer and Lieutenant Conrad is not primarily one of rank. It is one of courage. The prisoner did what he did because he was frightened. He is guilty, as charged, with cowardice in the face of the enemy, and he must pay the penalty. Thank you, Mr. Galeon. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> there is something... There is something bigger than military law. There is justice. 
What is on trial today is not simply one British airman. Sergeant Farmer has been fighting for his country in France now since the end of May. And some of us here know what he's been through. Some of us here know the freedom and the fear of flying. I say and I think that it is a, an unusual man who can keep his head at all times in the skies above a battlefield. Uh, 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 Sergeant Farmer uh, has proved... A moment, Mr. Galeon. The court would like to point out to prisoner's friend that someone has entered the courtroom whom I suspect would have been called as a witness for the defence, had anyone thought he was available. It's entirely up to prisoner's friend, of course, but if the defence would like to put him forward as a witness... Uh, Mr. Walker? It is Walker. The uh, prosecution has no objection, sir. Thank you. Mr. Galeon? Yes, yes, of course, sir. Captain Triggers, Royal Flying Corps, sir. I'm delighted to see you, Captain Triggers. I apologize for being late. I'd rather improperly dressed. I'm sure you must have a reason. I was on reconnaissance 12 days ago, sir, with Mr. Howes. We were shot down. Mr. Howes was killed. I found myself in a German military hospital. I managed to escape. When I finally got in contact with my flight office, they told me about this court-martial. So naturally, I made my way here as soon as I could. Well, I think that's a reasonable enough explanation. Mr. Galeon. Sir. Uh, Captain Triggers, how long have you known the prisoner? About six months. Six months. That's what I said, yes. And how did you first come to meet the prisoner? Really, I... sir, is this relevant? I'm waiting to see you. I told him to fly. And from your knowledge of the prisoner, sir, do you seriously think for one moment that this charge of cowardice levelled at Sergeant Farmer could possibly be justified? I'm quite sure the court realises... I agree. That your question quite clearly expects a particular answer. Will you please rephrase it? Sorry, sir. Would you agree that the prisoner is a brave man? He's still leading, sir. Yes. Will you put your question in another way? Sir. Captain Triggers, uh, how would you describe the prisoner as a man? It's a very ordinary man. Ordinary? Yes. Well, does the accusation surprise you? Very little surprises me. Captain Triggers, did you not give your flight, including the prisoner, an order that under no circumstances were they to attack this particular German monoplane? No. But I thought... Your thoughts of prisoner's friend are not evidence. Quite correct, Mr. Walker. Captain Triggers, do you agree that Sergeant Farmer was right in avoiding battle with this particular hunt. I have no idea. I wasn't there. Yes, but if you had been there, would you have done battle with this hunt? Captain hum? Triggers has already explained that as he wasn't there, he can't have an opinion on what he or anybody else might have done. Sir, would you agree that... Would you be prepared to let the prisoner be under your command again as a pilot? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Walker. Thank you, sir. Captain Triggers, you have said that you did not give the prisoner any order not to attack this particular... Correct. Man. So that, when he turned tail and ran away from the enemy, he was not only disobeying an order from Lieutenant Conrad, he was also disobeying an order from you, too, is that right? No. Well, surely we can assume, can we not, that any man in the armed forces of the Crown is implicitly ordered to engage the enemy unless told otherwise. I told my flight, including Sergeant Farmer, that they weren't to go looking for trouble from this particular Hun. There's a difference. I see. But would you attack this particular monoplane? Not without very good reason, no, no. Why not? Because we have neither the machines nor the weapons to give us a fair chance. You do fly BE-2Cs? Yes. Are you aware of what Flight Magazine says of BE-2Cs? And I'll quote that it is a flying machine of which any designer may be proud. No, I wasn't. But I wasn't talking about it as a flying machine. I'm talking about it as a fighting machine. And this German monoplane, are you trying to tell the court that it is a superior, to use your own words, a superior fighting machine? Infinitely superior. Despite the fact that it cannot fire upwards or downwards or to the side or to the rear? Yes. Despite the fact that the uh, pilot is alone in this particular machine, that he is both observer and gunner? Yes. Well, have you any evidence to support this claim? Any proof? I am the proof. I don't think the cause. It's one of really... these aeroplanes that shot me down 12 days ago, so I am the proof. So is Lieutenant Howes. He was my observer. 
of his dead. He's buried such bits of them as they could find outside Rene. So that's Lieutenant Carrie Jones, Lieutenant... We don't want a captain. I think, in a way, Captain Triggers is answering your last question. But I would ask him to confine himself strictly to that, answering the questions. Nobody will ask the right questions. Captain Triggers, do you think it normal practice for a witness not only to be able to choose his own answers, but his own questions as well? I'm not blaming you. It's prisoner's friend who's made a mess of it. He asked me what sort of a man Sergeant Farmer is. I told him he's an ordinary man. You'd have thought he'd had the sense to ask what sort of a pilot he is. witness must confine himself to answering the questions. I won't warn him again. I'm sure we're all anxious to secure justice. Perhaps it would help the court if I were to ask the relevant question. Thank you, Mr. Walker. What sort of pilot is the prisoner? He's an exceptional pilot. But surely you've noticed that he is not on trial here for ineptitude. He is on trial here for cowardice. For cowardice and for disobeying an order. If, as you say, he is an exceptional pilot, then he obviously used his exceptional skills, skills which you helped to teach him, in order to turn tail and run away from the enemy. Don't you agree? Do you take Sergeant Farmer outside and shoot him, or just return him to duty? It's unlikely to make any difference. Thank you, Captain Triggers. That is all. A moment, Captain Triggers. Would you clarify your last statement for the benefit of the court? Sergeant Farmer has been in action continuously for six months. He is therefore overdue to die, sir. In these circumstances, you could argue that what the prosecution calls cowardice is in fact a virtue. I'm sure May the court I will explain, always... sir. Continue, Captain. At the moment, we have neither the machines nor the weapons to attack the enemy. The most useful thing any good pilot can do, like Sergeant Farmer, is to stay alive. He's no coward. Just because, he just because he doesn't attack the enemy when he doesn't have a cat in hell's chance. There's nothing heroic about committing suicide and incidentally killing his observer. The court cannot accept that the first duty of a member of His Majesty's forces is survival. It's not survival, sir. As fast as our new pilots are getting to France, they're being killed. They're being killed because they know nothing about air warfare. They know nothing about air warfare because nobody's taught them. And nobody's taught them because the only people qualified to teach them, experienced pilots like Sergeant Farmer, are being shot out of the skies by these new German machines. I see. Thank you. A few more months without proper aeroplanes, better equipment, the Flying Corps will never recover. That's all. Stand and it's down. Not by damn stupid ideas like this court martial. I have ordered you to stand down. Yes, Would prisoner's friend like to continue with his final plea? Yes, sir. Or would he be willing to forego it? The defence rests, sir. I think you've made a wise decision. Court will now adjourn to consider its verdict. mess of it. How can anyone expect a man who's never even seen a court martial to defend a man on trial for his life? Not exactly martial, nor are I. Well, what happened? They've just adjourned to consider. has reached its verdict. On the first charge, that of willful disobedience of lawful command by a superior officer, the court finds the prisoner guilty. On the second charge, of cowardice in the face of the enemy, the court finds the prisoner not guilty. Disobedience of an order is a very serious offence. It strikes at the heart of military discipline. It is not an offence that this court, or indeed any court martial, can overlook. Various extenuating circumstances have been raised by a prisoner's friend, and we have taken these into account. The prisoner is sentenced to nine days' detention. Starting from the day 
when he was first put under arrest. Escort, fall in. That means you're discharged immediately. By the front. Quick march. Left. 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 You're back on flying duty. A long reconnaissance, escorting me. <laughs> 